Hi guys, welcome to PBTV. We've brought out a, another semi brand new product again. Uh, so this is the SSG 10 A2 variant from Novrich. We've done a very small uh, accuracy and sort of outdoor test with this. Um, that if you go on to our YouTube Shorts, you'll be able to catch that, showing what this thing can do at a, a little bit of a longer range than what we normally do. Uh, but we thought we'd go over its features, have a little uh, chat about what this thing offers uh, and see how it compares to a few other things. So as always, it, always with these videos, we start at the tip and work our way back. So on the front, we do have a uh, very similar barrel to the standard SSG-10 because the upper is the same. It's the lower that's slightly different. So we do have a screw cap on the top here that can come out and you can replace that with an adapter to add a 40 mil counterclockwise thread, but it doesn't come with any inherent um, thread that you could put a device on the front of this, you will need an extra part. It does have the fluted parts on the front, so you can see the uh, um, engravings that they've put on this, so they've added a bit of texture to it. It's all for sure, but it does look very, very cool. Coming a bit further back, so the main difference that we have with this compared to the SSG-10 is this lower receiver. So it's much, much wider at the front. Uh, it has a few... Um, adjustments as well at the back and it has a bit of a more vertical grip. It has a lot in keeping with the M40, the sort of USMC uh, bolt action, but it is very, very different. Um, the main thing that you will notice when you get your hands on this is the weight behind it. So it is 2.9 kilos. So it is a bit of a heavy beast compared to the SSG 10A1, which is definitely designed to be sort of a recce rifle, be able to move fast, get into a position and take a nice clean shot. This feels like a very static, um, sort of platform, you're going to um, lay, lay in wait for a long time with this one. I don't think I'd be wanting to run around uh, a lot with this. By all means, you can. And if you want to run around with a, a three, three kilo uh, bolt action, by all means do. But again, uh, snipers, you're trying to be sort of stealthy and sneak and crawl through small areas. Adding that extra weight might be a bit difficult. But what that does mean with the weight behind this is when you are in a static position, pulling the bolt, maneuvering it and everything like that, there's no accidental uh, nudges, knocks or uh, unintentional movement. So everything can be done with sort of purpose, uh, meaning that you're even uh, harder to discover because this thing's just not going to move. Um, the bolt uh, itself, again, similar to the SSG-10, we have the knurled handle, and as I've always advised, put your thumb across, straight pull, uh, and this thing is exceptionally easy to chamber around. Uh, it was coming out on the Chrono just before this, we did 372 FPS on a 0.3, so that's sitting about 1.9 joules. So again, you can even uh, push that a little bit more, you could go up to fours and probably still be under that joule limit. Um, just be careful with snipers, especially with the SSG-10s, we do see a little bit of dual creep. So when you are changing your BB weight, that you do chrono on the weight BB you are going to use, because we want to make sure you are in the correct power limit and you're not accidentally creeping over by using a different weight BB. On the lower receiver, you can see a little circle here and one at the front as well. That is a QD point. As you can see, we've added a QD point sling to this one, making it really, really convenient and easy to carry. Um, if you want it to drop to a secondary, means it's very, very versatile. The little um, screw that you can see here, adjusting that, raises the cheek rest and then tighten it down, locks it in place. And you can take some of these little slivers out of the stock if you want it to change that as well. For the top, you can see that we've added the scope. This was mainly added for when we were doing our little range test outdoors. So we added a four to 16. Some people think that's excessive. I think it looks really, really cool. Um, so we've got the sort of focus ring at the front, adapter at the back and range adjuster here. And it is simply mounted by the standard um, VSR sort of style rail that we have at the, uh, on the top of the receiver here. There's a small bit of rail there and a small bit of rail here and you just bridge, bridge across the gap with a couple of low mounts and you are good to go. A lot of people use short dots. You could quite easily put a red dot on this if you wanted, if you wanted to sort of take some of that weight off because again, the body and the receiver of this thing is nearly three kilos. So you're gonna know about it. We do have the long variant here. So this is 1.07 meters. So 107 centimeters in length. And again, that can be finely adjusted by this bit at the back, the, the little slivers. You undo that, take some of the uh, 
uh, pads out and you can make it slightly shorter. That's more for sort of comfort rather than anything else. It's not massively affecting the overall um, length of the weapon. When it comes to hop, again, similar to the A1, we do have the little slider on the left hand side of the weapon with uh, little points on there. So again, once you get your hop set, put a little mark on it or um, note down which little uh, dashed line is your hop because personally I have had a few occasions where I've been pressing or removing the mag and I've my thumbs pushed forward and accidentally removed my hop so I've got to then reset it. Talking about the mag, so there is a button at the front here pressing that releases the 28 round VSR style magazine and again very easy to just click that in place and you are good to go. We have a little flat bladed trigger, meaning it's really, really nice and comfortable to just uh, pull that pressure back and release that round exactly when uh, you need to. We have noticed a couple of things when um, putting these together that make sure all your screws are fully tightened down because we've had reports of when people are trying to chamber that first round, uh, they're having to push the mag in and do various different things. What we have found that is, is there's one, two, three screws on this. You need to make sure these are properly tightened down to make sure that the gap between the magazine and the breech is as close as it possibly can be. But once you've got all that sorted, this thing is a bit of a beast. Um, we were having a lot of fun on our 60 meter range outdoors, making very loud bangs on the metal target that was all the way down at the far end um, and having uh, some really, really consistent shots and some, uh, some nice results with it. So again, this is the SSG 10 A2 variant. There are currently three variants out there. The standard A1 that we've all seen, this is the A2, and we have the A3, which has the skeletonized lower receiver. So if this is something that you're after, they will be available uh, very, very soon. If not, if you're watching this video on the product, they're available right now, so grab it. Um, but yeah, really happy to see these in. Uh, we've had a lot of people request them. But if you want to grab yours, please do so now and have a lot of fun with it. If that's everything, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in a bit. Bye.